Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. One of the biggest issues that the world faces today is there's not enough water and rain, and there's too much water and rain. Depends on where you are, whether you're north, south, east, west. It really depends on your local climate as far as the amount of water that you're getting and whether it's sufficient for the humans, the animals, the crops, the trees, everything around you, including the microorganisms in the ground, as whether things are growing and flourishing or actually dying and going in the opposite direction. So we're bringing uh, the, a new idea that actually has been evolving over several years in Washington, D.C. and the United States. And it's something that really is catching the world's notice and it's catching on very rapidly on the African continent, Latin America, South Seas, and also in Asia and some in Europe as well. And so we want to share that with you. And this is really gonna be more of almost like a training video but at the same time, it really is our normal, the Emerald Planet TV broadcast. This is called Rain Gardens, Bayscaping, and Urban Forest, Supporting Nature to Save the Planet. And this is really very important. And we collaborated with the emblems that you see here, the Department of Energy and Environment, which is a huge supporter of the environment and doing fantastic work in Washington, D.C. Also, the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, which is looking at all the tributaries and the watersheds that are flowing in the Chesapeake Bay, how to save it, remediate it, and actually improve it before the water reaches the Atlantic Ocean. And then Monaterra LLC, which is really the backbone of what this program is all about. This again is about rain gardens, basecaping and urban forest and Bonaterra LLC, which is a firm here and, and a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. is working with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay Department of Energy and Environment, DOEE, and also with Casey Trees. We need to give them recognition as well as some of the images you'll be seeing in these gardens that are coming up will be from Casey Trees. But looking at the Landscaping Homeowner's Guide, this is something that's very important. We share this uh, with people around the globe. Uh, this is a River Smart program. Uh, this is the one we're talking about is River Smart Homes. And also there's the River Smart Communities. All of these combined together can really take the excess water we're getting on the East Coast, particularly in Washington, D.C., and capture that, process it, store it in the ground, increase the water table at the same time to improve the quality of water that's in the ground and also to slow it down and to remove all the pathogens, the viruses, everything that's in there, including heavy metals, pesticides, insecticides, fertilizers, all of these things that are determining the quality of our water. And looking at this emblem that we have here, the various ways that actually uh, the things that I was talking about, the heavy metals, the chemicals, 
uh, even the plastics and the trash that washes off the streets, off the roads, uh, goes into the underground aquifers, into the streams, rivers, uh, creeks, ponds. Everything is being contaminated by this excess runoff and everything that's left in an urban environment. And as you may remember from previous, the Emerald Planet television programs, 80%, 80% of the population now in the United States, uh, in a country like Brazil, 87% of the population now live in urban areas. So what you're seeing in front of us is a challenge worldwide. Now, what we're talking about as far as the rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest is to change everything we've thought about as landscaping in the past over the last two to three hundred years. It's a long time. Three centuries, even four centuries, to go back to where we were using native species, which goes back to 400 years, and to change the dynamic of capturing the water and at the same time to increase the amount of water through transpiration is actually released into the environment to increase rainfall. So you see these four plants to our left, the non-natives, these were introduced, many of them from European communities and other localities uh, into the United States, North America. And you see how shallow these roots are. And then if you go to the natives, you can see how they adapted to the local conditions, both the drought and the excess water, and how deep these root structures go. I'm not really gonna give you the names of these plants because these will change community by community, sometimes even with a, a few dozen miles from where you'll be sitting, or where you're living. Uh, so you need to talk with the, the garden shops within your own local area uh, feed and seed stores if you're out in rural areas about what are the native plants that are available to you. But the native plants have adapted to the soil, the air, the water, uh, the amount of sunshine, the uh, intensity of the rain, although that is increasing, and we'll talk about that. And then also as far as drought conditions and how they were able to take the moisture from the air through the mist and dew, and also from the rain and transfer that down through these very deep root systems. So we want the natives on the right side. Uh, as you replace your plants, you may wanna get rid of non-natives, and that's important to remember. Now, looking at uh, the conditions of the uh, basecaping and the rain gardens, you'll see on the left side, the before, see the erosion that's here, uh, just very uh, short grass was protecting this with the intensity of the rains was washing off. If you look to the right side with the mulch and the new native species, you can see a very different scene. This is absolutely the same uh, shot, the same land, the same environment, but with very different plantings. And you can see the difference with the, on the left side, the non-native species, the right side, the native species. Now doing this, you want to have a very detailed plan about how you're going to address the issue and how do we affect and impact on the long-term of using the native species and also the uh, landscaping that surrounds this. And also one of the secret sauces of this whole thing is mulch chopped up wood, if you want to uh, give it a very common name. And so in many areas of the world where they have uh, huge uh, plantations, this could be palm oil, could be coconut, uh, other types of uh, food producing uh, and fiber producing uh, trees, many of these are diseased or dying and also some are declining in production. So you can take the wood chips uh, from these types of uh, biomass and turn it into something very useful, which is the mulch that uh, you uh, can see in the photographs and also to interspace these and to solidify the soil, capture the water, process it, and raise the water table 
through very wise designs, plantings, and the use of mulch. Uh, this is the one that's where I am, and this is our prototype uh, rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest, all in a very highly built environment. And yet at the same time, you're going to see the transformation of this combination of a very good yet simple design at the same time using the proper native plants and also to be able to properly capture the rainwater. And uh, you're going to see some scenes of that as far as this rainwater, how it's captured, then it's processed through these rain gardens and basecaping and urban forest, goes into the ground, raises the water table, at the same time, it's purifying because it's eliminating the various chemicals and the other pathogens as well as heavy metals that will be coming out in the water. This is the, uh, the first. This is kind of the mothership, you will, of the rain gardens. And this is where you actually have a swell. A swell is where you have a depression in the earth that actually as the rainfall or the runoff comes into this, it's actually captured, and then it allows that water to slowly percolate into the soil. And you can see the plants that we have here, uh, they look uh, very vigorous, tall, robust, even though this is a black and white image, uh, but it's easy to see. And what you do is you go from uh, the inflow of where you're taking the downspout, or it could be runoff naturally, that's going around uh, your house coming out of your gardens uh, and your own wooded areas around your home in a, in a city, town, or village. And you have a trough this water flows into, slows it down, and then it goes into the swell. And these plants will go from water tolerant to water loving uh, to uh, accepting uh, wet feet, if you will, that's what we call it in the colloquial term, and then back to the water tolerant types of plants as you get to the back of the swell. But the swell usually is the soil that has been taken out of the earth, and then it's mixed. If you see the grainy nature of that, that's actually mixed with the mulch. So this will give you an idea of what all of this process looks like uh, on the right side, you'll see uh, a perk test being taken, how fast the water will uh, be absorbed into the ground. And so this goes down uh, one to two feet, uh, fill it with water, and then you time it to see how fast it's going to perk, meaning how fast it goes into the soil. Very important. Uh, this is a photograph taken right from my own gardens here. Uh, then you'll see the, the various landscaping that's going on here, both uh, with the basecaping and then also with the rain gardens. But all of this, again, is to slow down and capture the water. Uh, this will give you an idea of the images of what some of these rain gardens actually look like. Uh, the one on the left is a rain garden. On the right is basecaping. And this is pavers that are used to capture it, and you can see the native species planted around this, very important, uh, to capture that water, let it go into the ground, and then the root structures can absorb it. This will give you an idea of the native species, how they can be planted on both sides of a sidewalk. And then in the background behind this uh, small tree, shrub is a rain barrel and you can see the water being captured off of the roof and going into the rain barrel and also into the rain garden itself. Thank you for uh, letting me take you through this as far as explaining to you what is a rain garden, basecaping and urban forest, our colleagues and collaborators in this as we create the Emerald Planet. We're looking at the topic of rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest as Washington, D.C. has become one of the leaders, not only in the United States, but the whole world, 
as far as how do we create new water, taking storm water, groundwater, it's called in some communities and over in Europe, and turn that into a captured, stored, processed, and then water that can be used in the future as we raise the water table and also to provide more water going back in to recharge the aquifers. These organizations are collaborators in this process in Washington, D.C. And the Emerald Planet International Foundation, the Emerald Planet TV, has been working diligently as one of the key partners in this whole process to disseminate this information and also to develop what you're looking at right here, one of the rain gardens, the basecaping and urban forest as a prototype, not only for the United States and North America, but also to be used in Latin America, the African continent, uh, the South Pacific, Asia, and really around the globe. This will give you an idea of the designs that are needed as far as moving forward and to capture the excess stormwater that's coming off of the roof, hitting on the ground, and to be able to capture it, store it so it's processed, and then it's available for the future. What you see in the blue is the rain garden, and you'll see the special features of that. And then the two green areas, that's what's called basecaping, but these are actually made with the same idea in mind as the rain gardens, where you actually go down two feet, turn up the very hard packed clay that you see here in this photograph, and then mix in a great amount of mulch. Mulch can be made out of uh, chopped up trees, uh, newspapers, leaves, uh, any kind of biomass and you want the cleanest and that is free of any kind of harsh chemicals like chemical fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, and also heavy metals. But this is a typical yard that you would see uh, not only just Washington DC, but around the United States and the over 300 uh, legacy cities, uh, non-native species grass that's been planted here and you have a few trees on the perimeter of the yard, fruit trees, and you have the crepe myrtles in the back. But little going on here as far as being able to slow down the velocity of the water. And on the East Coast, the uh, amount of rainwater because of severe climate change is increasing dramatically and the velocity and the power of these uh, electrical and thundercloud storms uh, is absolutely amazing. Uh, so much now, the storms are being measured in TNT, the, uh, the bomb type measurement of the explosive nature of the storms. This will give you an idea of what the soil really looks like. You can see here in the lower right of this uh, photograph, is the hard packed clay. It's been dug down two feet. And the purpose of that is to actually have what's called a perk test, a percolation test. How fast will this soil absorb the, the water, capture it, keep it in the ground, and then slowly release it underground. And it could travel up to eight to 15 miles in any direction, east, west, or south and as it flows from this particular area. And these uh, rock gardens actually were let to allow to go fallow for three years uh, before actually engaging in installing the rain gardens and the basecaping and the urban forest as well. Again, another scene, but over in the upper uh, right-hand corner, you can see what the actual perk test looks like. You dig down about two feet. Uh, you pour in about five gallons of water. Uh, let it set for 24 hours and then see how much water is actually left in the bottom of this hole that has been dug for the perk test. And that'll tell you where this uh, soil will actually percolate or not. But you can see this is literally just hard packed clay, uh, very thin grass, non-native species, 
And that's what you see again across much of the United States, North America, and around the globe. Uh, another scene of this as well, uh, you see the perk test and progress there in the lower right hand corner. But it's just to give you an idea of what all this looks like as the hard packed clay, the water hits this uh, hard packed clay. You can see the impervious surface uh, for the car park and the back left hand corner and also a walkway. So all this really is one impervious surface. So as the water hits, it flows off, it goes into the alleyway, into the storm drains, and literally goes out into the Potomac River and to the Chesapeake Bay and out into the Atlantic Ocean. And this is what the Department of Energy and Environment wants to capture, stop, uh, slow down and make sure that that water is actually useful for the local communities. Another scene of the same type of garden, hard packed clay, very thin non-native species grass. Uh, the ivy in the back is an invasive species, but at the same time, we're going to allow that to grow in the future and incorporate that into the urban forest because that's what's now being known as a green wall, a green wall. Uh, so there's various types of ivies and other species that actually can grow on the fences and can absorb great amount of carbon and sequester that in the ground along with capturing the rain on its leaves and its roots and take that into the soil as well. Another scene of the impervious surface and the immediate uh, lower right of this. Uh, looking back to the house and everything that comes off of that roof actually uh, ends up into the storm drains and going out into the tributaries. And because of the heavy volumes that are increasing year by year because of climate change, uh, this is becoming more and more of a problem as the speed and the amount of water that goes into the streams, the creeks, uh, the rivers out into the bay uh, becoming greater at all times. And so it's destroying the banks of these various tributaries. And then of course, carrying the pollutants, the heavy chemicals of fertilizer, insecticides, pesticides, uh, even uh, oils and other uh, waste that come off of the vehicles driving by these homes and that's all washed into the tributaries. Now going back to this design, we want to show you what this looks like. So you have the rain garden in the blue and now it's showing that we're going to actually move the downspout, uh, extend a hose on that that's going to end up in the rain garden and then the excess of the moisture from the rain garden then is going to be captured in the two basecaping gardens, which are actually built as rain gardens. And we'll explain that in just a minute. Uh, and then you see the round circular images in this design. These are for the native species trees, actually are planted as I saw in India, and where they actually, instead of having a mound type planting of these trees. Actually, they're six to eight inches below the surface of the soil so that as rainfall comes in and also you see the water that's running across the yards can actually go in to these uh, root balls and nourish and increase the rainfall that's going around the roots so they increases the growth of the trees. So this is a totally integrated system. And also uh, beside the rain garden to the left and the three larger uh, circles, that is a pervious, impervious surface. And you can see the broken lines in there. That's actually to trap the rainwater and store that just like the rain garden is going to be doing. Another scene as we move over to uh, the design, and I've seen this before, where now we're taking the downspout and extending the hose, and you can see the uh, excess where the water will come out 
in through the trough and that will go into the stones and then that will slow down the velocity of that and then go into the swell. A swell is a depression that's been created, dug down to take out excess earth and then break up the clay below that about two feet and then to infuse that clay with heavy amounts of mulch regardless of what it's made out of as long as it's a biomass it's clean and it can absorb and hold water uh, it can be used and then you have the banks so that this water is directed downward and not just flowing across the yard so this is what it looks like so we can see barely here uh, this is the trough where the water is going to come on the uh, downspout out through the hose uh, that's being uh, hooked up to the downspout itself and it's going to go into this trough you see the small stones that will actually slow down the velocity and then you have the slate sides of this to capture it and then allow that water to flow out at a much slower rate out into the swell which is almost two feet below what it was uh, before. And now you see the planting of uh, very uh, water happy plants that enjoy being in wet areas. And then up on the upper bank, you'll see a plant there that's water tolerant. And uh, then you see the heavy amount of mulch. Uh, actually, there's as much mulch below the ground as above the ground. This will give you an idea as the plants, water tolerant, water happy plants are put in and they will absorb and hold. And actually these are native species. So these roots go very deep into the soil and the mulch happens to capture that water, hold it and allow that to be absorbed. So that's the processing of this. Uh, no mechanical systems needed are used. You see the bay scaping in the back which will slow down and then we have on both sides uh, the uh, pervious uh, pavers uh, with uh, areas to count and capture the water. This is the uh, base gaping and uh, this was made as a rain garden so this will actually capture and hold huge amounts of water. Uh, a smaller one, different types of native species uh, again, to break up and add uh, color and texture to the rain garden, the basecaping, and the urban forest with, in the background, the new green wall that's growing for this area. Thank you for being with us, learning about rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest as we create the Emerald Planet. As we look at this notion of rain gardens, basecaping, and urban forest, we're definitely in built environments. Almost 80% of the American population, and in some countries, a much higher percentage than that are living in the built environment, are very urbanized areas. But what we're doing through the urban forest basecaping, and the rain gardens as that we're what we're calling inviting the whole of nature to flourish within the built environment. And what we're doing is that we're looking at everything that surrounds us in these urban areas that some of these have been around for two and three centuries, two to three hundred years. And so many non-natives have been brought into North America. And we can see these on the left-hand side and how shallow their root structures are. And when you see the fescue turf, uh, there's virtually no root structure. And then we look at the right side, and these are just examples of native species. And we're not even going to name all these because there's dozens and hundreds and thousands of these in every community around the United States and abroad. And these have very deep roots. And the reason for that is they adapted over centuries and maybe millennia uh, to their traditional areas. And so they know how to adapt to drought, to heavy rains, 
and at the same time to be able to capture sequester water in the ground to be able to draw that up when they need it during the dry seasons. And so we definitely want to be moving to native species in every locality around the globe and to rid ourselves as the non-natives or what are called uh, affectionately invasive species, which we want to get rid of. Now we've seen this before, but the importance of this, this whole thing of inviting the whole of nature to flourish is how do we recreate uh, what this may have been like uh, centuries ago uh, when before the settlers moved into these areas and these were either savannas or uh, heavy forest and so the water that would come uh, down from the sky the rainfall uh, would be captured and would be holding in the ground and by the time it would make its way to the streams and the rivers out into the Chesapeake Bay this is specifically for Washington, D.C., is that uh, the velocity would be greatly slowed down uh, and probably less uh, amount of flooding, where when you start having a built environment where you have hard packed clay, which is really the same as concrete, uh, with a little moisture, no oxygen in the soil, so you don't have the microorganisms actually to feed the soil and to take it from dirt into soil. And then we have these impervious surfaces, uh, parking lots, streets, roads, uh, stairwells, walkways, everything that's not allowing moisture to be absorbed, captured, put into the ground, and then allowed to be released slowly. Uh, these impervious surfaces really are destroying nature and destroying the environment itself and also decreasing the amount of water we have available for drinking because much of it becomes polluted in these areas. But this will give you an idea of the dramatic change that's happening uh, in the prototype uh, gardens that we put right here in Washington, D.C. These prototypes now are being shared across the African continent and Latin America, South Pacific, Asia, Europe, and uh, even uh, cities, towns, villages across the United States. But this will give you an idea of how the change has happened already by capturing and taking the runoff from the roof of this home in a built environment and channeling that into the swell, which is in the rain garden this is about two feet below the surface of the previous yard. I uh, went down two additional feet to break up the hard packed clay and then to mix in almost a ton of mulch, one ton of mulch. This was uh, chopped up bark that was used in this case. Also, you could use uh, leaves. Uh, chopped up newspapers, anything that's a type of a biomass could be used in order to put into the hard packed clay mixed and that allows the water to be captured, stored, and then processed, slowly released uh, throughout the water table and also into the aquifers. Uh, but this was after the uh, second day of this rain garden actually being installed. We ended up having nine inches, nine inches of rain. And you can see the mulch that's on the surface of this to keep this from flooding. Uh, the uh, native species were actually planted here. Uh, there are several non-native species that we allowed to stay uh, because of the age and the root structures they have to process the uh, water. But you can see how this, uh, swell was able to capture all this water. All of this would have run off of this surface, gone right into across the yard, out into the alleyway, into the storm drain, and most likely right out into the Potomac. We had nine inches of rain. That is a huge rainfall. And uh, this rain garden, brand new, only been installed for two days, actually uh, by the end of the rainfall, the water was to the edge of the top of the swell. 
I thought, oh no, we're going to have flooding. Guess what? No flooding whatsoever. No runoff from this. And, uh, and because of that, and the amount of water was not coming out from the downspout from the roof, uh, the, uh, the pavers over to the right-hand side were actually able to capture and store the water that was coming uh, from the rain. And then you can see the uh, urban forest. These were native species trees that were planted that have these water bladders at their base. And you can see also to the base gaping, which we actually turned those into uh, storm uh, water uh, rain control uh, to the back and to the side. And so all of this now has become a water capture process store and slowly released uh, system right here as a prototype for all these different areas. This is a close up. This is absolutely amazing as the swell began to fill with water. Uh, it was slowly releasing it into the ground area, which had never happened before because all this water would come off the roof uh, around the sides of the house and then just flow out into the alleyway uh, to the top of uh, this photograph. Uh, but you can see this is actually capturing this. This is probably after about four inches of rain has fallen. Uh, you can see where the pavers uh, to the right-hand side of this are actually uh, slowing down that rainfall and capturing it in the spaces in between the pavers. And then you see the native species trees and these water bladders that, have, that were planted about two weeks uh, before this heavy rainfall. And then also you can see the basecaping uh, gardens uh, to the immediate back right below the rain garden and the one to the right hand side. So again, this gives you a close up of what this entire system looks like as far as the rain garden in the front, taking all the storm water off the roof, capturing it, letting it go through the trough that you can actually see through the clear water there uh, at the bottom of the photograph. And then the excess would flow underground into the large and the small basecaping gardens and also out to the trees. And it's absolutely amazing to watch the rainfall. We think of rain coming straight down and then it's gonna flow on the incline. Where these trees are, it's almost like the water has been trained to flow towards the root balls uh, because these were actually planted six to eight inches below the surface instead of putting them in as a mound, which moves the water away from the trees. We actually planted these as is going on across much of India these days and the new plantings were six to eight inches below the surface. And then mulch was put in on top of the openings above the root ball. And then these become little rain gardens in themselves. It's amazing, amazing system. Uh, this will give you an idea. This is actually uh, about 12 months later. You see in the early spring here, how these native species that were very small and uh, were put in uh, about 12 months before this actual scene here and how they're actually expanding and growing in this space. Uh, this gives you an idea of looking at this rain garden and the complexity of it, but yet very, very simple. Uh, this will process, as I said, the two days after this was installed, it processed nine inches of rainfall. Uh, you see the trough in the bottom, which actually takes the water from the roof slows it down through the uh, smaller stones in the base of this and then this overflows out into the rain garden and you can see the mulch which actually uh, also helps to capture slow down the rain and sequester that uh, into the soil this will give you an idea of the whole system the uh, pervious surface because of the space of about uh, anywhere from a half to three quarters inch in between the, uh, the slate 
uh, allows the water to go in and be captured and processed. But this will give you an idea of the photographs and how that the native species are growing very nicely within this area. Uh, this is in the second year in the spring. And so a new coating of mulch has been placed on this. And also the old mulch from the year before when this was installed was actually mixed in to the dirt to allow more of the biomass uh, to uh, be absorbed. And this is uh, about 13 to 14 months. And you can see how vigorous these plants are during a rainstorm. And the trees that were planted, these urban forest trees, actually grew two feet uh, in the first year and have grown already another two feet in this year. This will give you an idea uh, looking down into the rain garden and the base gaping in the back and just how prodigious uh, all of these plants are and in capturing and processing the water. So they're taking the rainfall, the dew, the mist, transferring it through the roots into the soil. And these are very deep penetrating root plants. Close up of these plants, very beautiful. And also are carbon capturing uh, plants as well. So they're fixing, fixing carbon and moisture into the soil and holding both. And so the carbon that's going into the soil actually is now feeding the roots uh, with its natural energy. Beautiful, beautiful rain gardens and bayscaping. This is the wave of the future. Thank you for letting us share with how inviting the whole of nature to flourish in a built environment as we create the Emerald Planet. We're sharing with you about the rain gardens, bayscaping, and the urban forest being put in the built environment. So many urban areas across the United States and literally around the globe, tens of thousands of cities, villages, towns, and small communities actually can benefit from removing invasive species from their localities and putting in and allow to thrive the native species. So the whole thing is, is about native species and creating the natural space in a built environment is very important as climate change is alive and well and expanding across planet Earth. Many of the Western areas of the United States, but also in many countries around the globe are drying out where the East Coast are actually having uh, increased amount of rainfall to where it's almost destructive. And so what we're doing is we're looking at native species and uh, using these species to ameliorate the negative impact of climate change. I'm not going into all the variety names. I'm just gonna share with you uh, that in your local communities, you wanna get uh, involved with your cooperative extension service of your land grant university in the United States and many of the agricultural universities around the globe and many other countries. Also the uh, plant and the uh, tree nurseries that actually have native species from your own local area. And the native species actually uh, thrive and adapt to their local area. And many of these have been there for millennia, thousands of years. And uh, the native, non-native species were brought in in the last maybe 100 or 200 years and really have not adapted into the local environment. So uh, even the insects, uh, the butterflies, the pollinators, bees and others, are looking for their own species because they've all evolved together over decades and millennia. And so it's very important that we match the flora and fauna 
even in the ground where we have the uh, bioorganisms, uh, everything needs to be living from deep in the earth up to us human beings. So it's all about bringing balance to nature to capture the amount of rainfall that's coming, if it's increasing, or if it's coming in shorter burst in the monsoon seasons, how do you capture that excess rainfall at the time to process it, to uh, recharge the aquifers, and at the same time to increase the uh, groundwater that's available for native species plants. And these all adapted well together over uh, the decades, millennia. And so it's very important that we revert back to these native species and to create a almost a natural space. And I purposely put this in here. This is an impervious surface. This is a sidewalk, but yet it was actually installed so that the water would run into the rain gardens on each side of this impervious space. Better to put in pavers and or leave space in between the concrete or the slate or the brick uh, to allow the uh, rainwater to be able to flow into the soil, uh, be processed by the earth itself. So there's no mechanical systems involved in any of this area and uh, at the same time to recharge the aquifers, uh, raise the groundwater levels and to aid transpiration. Transpiration is the amount of evaporation from the trees, uh, the grasses and the soil that then goes back into create new clouds. This is also another way in a built environment where Actually, you can remediate the amount of runoff. You see the downspouts coming in, uh, going uh, over the mechanical systems behind this house. Uh, on the immediate left of this photograph, you see a, a 300 gallon rain barrel. And these are native species here. So that rain barrel actually uh, captures the runoff and then uh, goes into the rain barrel. And then that water is used in this uh, native species area that's beside uh, these uh, pavers. And these pavers you can see are gapped so that the rainwater as it comes in, uh, either down from the sky or off uh, the ground surrounding the, uh, the streets and the grass and the, the hard packed clay, actually can be absorbed. Again, processing sequester to hold and then to uh, release that water over a very slow period of time. Now this is going back to the prototypes that have been installed uh, in my area here in Washington, DC. And this is uh, after uh, 15 months, just 15 months uh, we saw the very small plants that were put in in the beginning and they said, leave them alone. They will grow and they'll actually fill their space. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing from this rainfall, uh, it's going into this rain, rain garden. And you can see around the edges of this actually no runoff. The water is hitting on even the slate and then it's going into the gaps in between the slate. And so just like what is happening here in this rain garden, where it's actually taking the rainfall, capturing it and storing it in the ground, holding it with the mulch, uh, the swell that you've seen before with the design of this is to actually, it's down two feet into the earth. The clay was broken up into very small particles and then mixed with over a ton of this mulch that you have here. And so that allows the water to go in, uh, to be stored, but also very slow release. And they're saying within eight to 12 hours, that water could be anywhere from about the same amount of six to 12 miles from this very site. And so this is a very beautiful functioning uh, rain garden 
and native species that are really taking us back to a era before uh, any of the built environment was installed in this area. Now, this is actually about a month after the photo, just before this was taken. Give you an idea of how fast uh, the native species are growing. And what you see above ground is about the depth of the root system below ground. And that's, you find very uh, amazing because when we started with this uh, soil, it was hard packed clay. Virtually none of the rainfall, the oxygen was actually going in uh, to the ground itself. And now this is uh, processing uh, over 46 inches of rainfall a year is being processed uh, through this rain garden. Uh, you can see this is about roughly an inch of rainfall. You can see the water in the trough that's come off the roof and around the yard uh, flowing into this rain garden. And this, this is uh, being uh, captured and then it's going to be distributed and held in place by the mulch that's been placed here. And so this is the new way of uh, creating what's called new water. New water is taking what before was considered a waste or something that was very hazardous, heavy down, downpours. And we tried to shed that water off as quickly as possible out into the storm drains, out into the tree, tributaries, uh, creeks, into the ponds, into the rivers out into the Chesapeake Bay and into the Atlantic Ocean. Now we want to capture and sequester this water as close to us as possible to recharge the aquifers and to raise the uh, groundwater around us. Uh, another scene of this from the other side, but these native uh, species are absolutely amazing how actually tiny these were uh, just 12 to 14 months before this and how they're now spreading throughout the rain garden. And again, the root systems are about as deep in the ground as these plants are tall. So these are not shallow uh, root systems at all. But these are a huge root ball. Uh, organic root stimulant was placed in the bottom of the hole before these were actually planted. And now because of the carbon capture of the leaves of these systems, along with the rainfall, the dew and the mist, the carbon that's being captured out of the air is going into the roots and these are growing at a very rapid rate. So what you're seeing here in front of you is an entire micro system uh, because uh, in the hot days of the summer, uh, these will transpire the water from the ground and also what's stored in the leaves uh, and the uh, trunks of these different plants. And that will go to create new rainfall, new clouds. And so this is really an entire system. This will give you an idea of looking at the back of the property and how lush green this is from what it was before. Uh, actually, we planted clover in this area. Clover is a nitrogen fixing plant. Also, it's part of being a carbon sump. So that goes to capture the water, goes to capture the carbon, and it fixes nitrogen in the soil. And then on the immediate left side, this is a, a native species. This is a bald cypress. Uh, this a uh, tree actually has grown four feet in less than 15 months. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, you see the base capers both on the left and the right side and how vigorous these plants are. And again, these were created as rain gardens to capture as much of the moisture as possible. This is an overview shot of uh, the rain garden and this entire system of how the clover, which is part of uh, the lower level of the urban forest, which will have five different levels uh, of canopy. Uh, the clover is working very well to uh, rid of the 
native species grass that have been planted uh, decades ago. And the clover is gradually choking that out, making it almost as a carbon sump carpet. Uh, for this, you can see the uh, the pavers themselves because the spacing in between the slate are absorbing the water very well. And then the native species plants are working extremely well to capture. So thank you for being with us on the Emerald Planet TV as we talk about the rain gardens, basecaping, and the urban forest, a prototype that can be used across the African continent uh, the South Pacific, Latin America, uh, Europe, Asia, and all the other areas around as we create the Emerald Planet.